Hi, I'm Michael Stittle. And I'm Nick Nanos. Nick, I can't believe it. We actually made it to election day. This is incredible. Uh, we're going to have the last uh, polling that we can report on today, of course. Uh, but I just want to say uh, to our listeners or watchers, thank you so much. We've had uh, thousands of downloads of our podcast, hundreds of thousands, I think half a million views or something on YouTube. Uh, it's been a, a really terrific experience. And thanks always, Nick. And and also, I want to say that we're not going anywhere. We, Nick and I both desperately need sleep. But after this election, <laughs> trend line will continue, uh, just not on a uh, as frequently a basis. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nick, uh, why don't we get right into it, into the into the final numbers? Yeah, well, Michael, it's Super Bowl Monday for the polling industry. Yeah. There no will be pressure. tears, no pressure, tears of Nick. joy <laughs> and tears of sadness, probably yeah. for some pollsters. Hopefully, uh, hopefully a good day for uh, for the Nanos team. Mm. But, you know, the thing is, is uh, we were doing polling every single day of the election. We were doing polling yesterday, which was the last day that you could poll and release public numbers. So anything I'd like to make it very clear that anything that we're reporting on today was posted yesterday on the Nanos website. Mm -hmm. on social media and on the CTV website uh, before the uh, before election day. So these are old. When we say old, it's like seven hours, eight yeah. hours, nine hours old polling yeah. data, but it is uh, not any new polling. So how's that? We, we are not that? we are not breaking the Elections Act. Uh, do not throw us in elections jail, please. These are previously reported uh, polling data. Yeah, like we're on a roll. You said we had like 500,000 views on YouTube, right? Like, yeah. Let's, let's, not, uh, let's not jinx anything. So the good news <laughs> is, the good news is, is uh, we're, we'll, today we're going to be focusing on uh, the polling that was completed yesterday and released yesterday. And wh what we get, two things we have going on. You know, we do, uh, we do a three-day rolling average. Mm -hmm. On the closing weekend, we have an enhanced sample where we do, as opposed to 400 interviews, 800 interviews. And what's interesting is, is that when we look at the numbers, to be transparent, we reported on the numbers for Saturday and Sunday, and then we have our election call poll, which is only based on interviews that were exclusively done on Sunday. The number that we focus on, the election call number for CTV Globe and Nanos, is the Sunday only. And Michael, that number has traditionally been the most accurate because it's the day before the election so it's the best snapshot so the polling numbers for the survey that was completed and released on sunday 32.4 for the liberals 31.2 for the conservatives 17.5 for the new democrats block at 7.5 people's party at 6.6 .6, and the green party at 4.5 wow uh, now, Nick, you always use the phrase vote efficiency, uh, which is key to how these things translate uh, into actual seat counts. Um, what, what, are, what are your numbers telling you? Well, you know, the thing is, is back in 2019, we learned uh, it, was a, it was a good lesson for all of the federal parties on, on vote efficiency because the Liberals actually lost the popular vote in 2019, but actually won the greatest number of seats. So the thing is, is for the Conservatives, they have these big wins in the prairies and they're inefficient at converting into seats. So the, the most likely statistical outcome, at least right now, if it is a tie between the Liberals and the Conservatives on election day and with the results that come in today, um, would be the Liberals winning more seats than the Conservatives. But hmm. we have to have a big, uh, big asterisk on this. We don't know what the voter turnout is going to be like. We don't know how good the get out the vote strategy is and resources for each of the federal parties. And we also don't know, because this is a pandemic, whether for some people who haven't voted by mail or haven't voted in the advanced polls, if they show up and see a long line, whether they just potentially just go home. So there's a lot of uncertainty there. So those things are going to affect what the final numbers really land at. Uh, Nick, for those watching the election uh, special on CTV tonight, and, and you will be on, on the panel, so we'll see you later tonight. Um, what, what, can, what should viewers be on the lookout for? Uh, what, what are sort of the early indicators on, on which way things might go? So uh, one of the early indicators in Atlantic Canada is still a very good region for the, uh, for the Liberals, but there are a number of seats that are toss-ups between the Liberals and the Conservatives. 
if uh, if we see the Conservatives do significantly better that better on election night, uh, then that might be indicative of how the Conservatives might do in Ontario and British Columbia. Likewise, if the Liberals are able to hold on to seats and the Conservatives don't have any dramatic surge, it might mean that it could be a solid state election. But the other region, other regions that I'm watching, you know, Quebec. Will the bloc hold on to its uh, seats? Because we know that at one point in the election, the Liberals were doing better than before and were challenging the bloc. And in uh, in Ontario, that's really critical for Aaron O'Toole. Will, uh, will Aaron O'Toole make any kind of breakthrough in the 905? Can he pick up some more seats? But you know what? Right now, Michael, one of the potential outcomes, and there are a lot of different outcomes for this election, is something that is very similar to 2019. Hmm. It's it's so strange that we might actually have a, a repeat of of that. I mean, you know, especially if the Conservatives potentially win the uh, popular support number, but the Liberals actually pull off a, a greater voter efficiency, vote efficiency. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, that's why I'm looking at parties like the uh, New Democrats and the People's Party of uh, of Canada because, you know, the thing is, is for the NDP, if they hold support, uh, that'll be not great news for the Liberals. And, you know, when you look at those day over day numbers, the Saturday, Sunday sample versus a Sunday sample, there was a bit of a bit of a negative, uh, bit of a negative pressure on the NDP number. Mm. And uh, with the, the liberals going up a bit uh, within the margin of error, but it's just of note. Right. Because in my experience, people don't strategically vote. Usually many don't strategically vote until the very end because they like the party that they want to vote for. But in the very end, they might vote for another party to get a particular outcome. And then the other, the other party to watch is the People's Party. Um, you know, we look at the polling and the, the polling for all the pollsters ranges from anywhere from five to nine, 10% for the People's Party of Canada. Uh, will they be able to deliver their vote? How motivated are their folks? How well organized are the People's Party? And, uh, and I think for the Conservatives, if the, if the People's Party does well, it uh, provides another complication when it comes to some of these vote splits. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious if People's Party uh, leader Maxime Bernier has a chance, uh, a real chance to win his, uh, his seat. Well, that seat is held by the Conservatives. And if there is one candidate that could challenge the Conservatives, it is Maxime Bernier. Hmm. Um, he's got a good following in the riding. Uh, but the interesting thing is he hasn't spent as much time in his riding. And this is where it's interesting. Enemy Paul, the leader of the Green Party, in contrast, has spent a lot of time uh, in her riding. Will that pay pay dividends for her uh, compared to Maxime Bernier, who's been uh, campaigning outside of his riding in order to help the People's Party movement, which has been uh, gathering some steam over the course of this election? Hmm. Uh, Nick, is there are there any surprises uh, that that you might be on the on the lookout for tonight? I think the surprises People's Party. Uh, because you know, in the last election, they didn't do very well. They're definitely a factor in this election. Where they do well will be interesting in terms of the distribution of support. If they do well in Ontario, that might not be good news for Aaron O'Toole, uh, but I'm gonna be watching the People's Party as to whether they can deliver on some of the goodwill that's been measured in, uh, in a number of the polls. And then, uh, and then watching the bloc and the NDP. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, the Liberals and the Conservatives, both of those parties, their future is actually in the hands of the other parties, mm. right? Like for the Liberals, it's in the hands of the New Democrats, right? For the Conservatives, it's in the hands of the, the People's Party. And that's why um, we're, watching, we're watching those parties. And then the Bloc has an impact both on the Liberals and on the Conservatives. Well, yeah, you referred to this as, a, as your Super Bowl. It really is, Nick. Uh, this is going to be a, a pretty exciting night. Uh, and, and I can't believe how close things still are after, you know, 36 days. It's just incredible. Uh, Nick, as always, uh, thanks very much. And, and thanks to all of our uh, listeners and viewers for sticking with us. And Michael, I'd like to say thanks to you. I've really enjoyed uh, doing yeah. the podcast during the elections. And uh, I don't know if we're allowed to say oh. cheers. No, there's no, I, product, got my no product placement, no product placement, but <laughs> hey, brother, that was a good run and uh, yeah, more good. trend line. All right. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I need that coffee earlier <laughs> oh, yeah. this morning. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a long night. Well, Nick, thank you. Thanks uh, to, to 
uh, everybody behind the scenes on, on Trendline. And, uh, and we will see you later tonight, Nick, at the, on the CTV election special. <laughs>